College football is going through its most transformative shift in decades. Powerhouses like Texas and Oklahoma are officially in the SEC. USC and UCLA joined the Big Ten, and the Pac-12 is now essentially the Pac-2. But how did TV rights blow up the entire college football landscape as we knew it, and what are the hidden costs of these shakeups? Welcome to FOS Explains. In this video, we're breaking down the finances behind college football realignment and its impact on the former Power Five conferences. The first domino to fall came three years ago. In 2021, Texas and Oklahoma announced that they were leaving the Big 12 for the SEC. The SEC had just signed a $3 billion media deal with ABC and ESPN and the two powerhouse schools wanted in. The teams were contractually required to play in the Big 12 through the 2024-25 season, but they left a year early after paying the conference a combined $100 million exit fee. The Longhorns were so stoked to join the new conference that they threw a $2.3 million SEC celebration party. That aired on the SEC network the weekend before becoming an official member. This move set off a chain reaction over the next few summers. Conferences, poaching teams from one another looking to load up and stay competitive eventually leading to the Pac-12's collapse. Despite the name, the Big Ten has grown far beyond its original 10 members. The Big Ten's expanding roster now includes these 18 schools after adding USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington this year. This lineup stretches from coast to coast, creating a conference that covers the entire country. But the question is, why add new teams to an already balanced league? A year after the SEC announced they would be adding Texas and Oklahoma, the Big Ten saw a chance to close the gap between them and their rival SEC. They made a bold move, convincing USC and UCLA to leave the Pac-12. I'm sure you guys don't know too much about UCLA, but our football program, but we're in LA. The move helped the conference secure the biggest media rights deal in NCAA history, a mid $7 billion deal with Fox, CBS, and NBC. Then, the Big Ten added two more big West Coast media markets, Oregon and Washington. The Pac-12 struggle with securing a lucrative media contract played a significant role in these additions. As the conference faced financial uncertainties, the advantages of the Big Ten's big media deal became irresistible. Adding these schools makes the Big Ten more competitive, bringing fresh rivalries and high-caliber matchups. USC and UCLA's football programs, combined with Oregon and Washington's strong athletic traditions, definitely elevate the conference's overall profile. But it'll come with a cost. UCLA is projecting that joining the Big Ten will cost an additional four to five million dollars a year in travel expenses. The ACC is also at the center of the CFB shakeup. Three schools are joining the league, Cal, Stanford, and SMU. The ACC is primarily made up of schools on the East Coast. You got Duke, UNC, Miami, but the three new schools are the conference's first teams west of the Mississippi River. Traveling from the East Coast to California or Texas significantly increases flight times. For example, the distance from Berkeley, California to Miami, Florida is roughly 2,900 miles. That translates to a five to six hour flight. Traveling from Stanford to Boston is around 200 miles farther. These longer trips demand more time, more logistical planning, and cost teams more money. Extensive travel also can have impacts on the athlete. Travel fatigue and jet lag are tied to increased illness and injury risks. Joining the ACC means higher travel expenses, but the new teams are more focused on the potential increases in revenue from the TV deals. The conference's three new schools are taking a big financial risk. The ACC's TV deal pays out member schools about $30 million a year but the new members had to forfeit some of that money to convince the existing teams to vote them in. Stanford and Cal are giving up 70% of that revenue for their first seven years in the conference. Meanwhile, SMU won't receive any media revenue from the ACC for nine years. Instead, SMU will rely on money from donors. Boosters have pledged over $200 million to the Mustangs over the next nine years, and SMU has raised the school record $159 million this year alone, with over $100 million coming the week they announced their move to the ACC. After the seven to nine years, the new schools are also expected to receive close to the $30 million in payouts from the conference's media revenue. That number is nearly triple the $9 million a year SMU got from the AAC. This expansion will reportedly bring the conference an additional $60 million 
dollars to be dispersed between the pre-existing ACC schools, some of which will be handed out on a team performance basis. But it's not all smiles in the ACC. Florida State and Clemson are in legal battles trying to force their way out of the conference. The ACC's media contract runs until 2036, which is the longest of the major conferences. And it's also one of the cheapest. FSU and Clemson say that their current deal is too small and too long. Simply put, they believe they generate significantly more revenue if they were in a conference with a better TV deal. The Big 12 now has 16 teams. Four new schools joined the party this year, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and Colorado. These schools, formerly known as the Pac-12's Four Corner Schools, spread the conference out across the country and across all four major U.S. time zones. These additions came in response to the league losing two powerhouse schools. Remember, Texas and Oklahoma announced they were heading to the SEC back in 2021. A few weeks later, the conference responded with plans to add four more teams. BYU, UCF, Cincinnati, and Houston officially joined the Big 12 in 2023. Just a few months after adding those four teams, Colorado announced the move to the Big 12 in 2024. Then, the other three new teams officially joined this summer. As a result, the Big 12's roster will now include these 12 schools alongside the new members, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and Colorado. Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark has said that he, quote, will not stop until the Big 12 is the number one conference in America. And that doesn't just mean adding more teams. He says that the Big 12 is interested in generating more revenue through a naming rights partner. But there's another conference where the future doesn't look so promising. Once celebrated as the Conference of Champions, the Pac-12 is now just two teams, completely falling apart after losing 10 of its 12 members. So how does a Power 5 conference crumble? A bad TV deal. In 2011, the Pac-12 signed a 12-year, $3 billion deal with Fox and ESPN. It paid schools around $30 million a year, and the deal also launched the Pac-12 network. Honestly, it was seen as a really good deal at the time, one of the richest and most innovative in college sports. But it had a fatal flaw. The league presidents opted against giving the Pac-12 a broadcast partner. For example, the SEC and ACC network are distributed by ESPN, while the Big Ten network is distributed by Fox. The network ultimately had distribution issues and became less valuable than its peers. This meant inking a new TV deal was already going to be hard. But that job got even harder in 2022 when UCLA and USC announced their move to the Big Ten. Between having no distribution partner for the Pac-12 network and two of its top schools leaving, sources say that the league would have been lucky to get a TV deal worth even as much as they signed for in 2011. Over the next year, the conference fumbled negotiations for a new deal. The best offer was a deal with Apple TV that would have reportedly paid schools $23 million a year over five years. That's around $7 million less annually than their current deal. The schools refused to sign it, and over the course of two months, eight of the ten remaining schools left for conferences with more media revenue. In its new form, the Pac-12 is no longer a premier conference, and the Power Five era is officially over. But I'm curious, do you think we should call the current day the Power Four era or the Super Conference era? And what are your thoughts on college football realignment? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more about the business of sports.